So Tom Scott, for those who don't know, is a legend in the YouTube space. In the sort of informational documentary kind of YouTube area, he will go out to some area and be like, this is a thing, it's pretty cool. And then in like seemingly, well effectively one take, we'll give like a monologue and explain all the stuff. He'll interview people and it's well-researched, well-presented, bite-sized content showing you some part of the world that you, you would never see otherwise. Some interesting thing. But recently, he released this video titled, After 10 Years, It's Time to Stop Making Videos, which is just sad. He's not quitting in its entirety, apparently. He's just going to be more focusing on making the occasional video rather than sticking to, you know, his one a week schedule that he's kept for 10 years. So he's not going away entirely. It's just he's going to be making far less content. He's not going to be worrying about the grinds, hitting the schedules and all that jazz. Like he's not going to disappear entirely. It's just the content he's going to be producing will be very different. He's fading into the background, still there, but nowhere near as prominent, which I think is cool. If he feels, feels it necessary to do that, for his own well-being, he's had enough, he's done everything. All power to him, you know? I've chosen a bad picture of him here with his eyes closed, I'm sorry, but there's a particular section I want to talk about. This video got 8 million views in 3 days, showing how respected he is as a creator on this platform. There's one section though I wanted to talk about. It's like uh, 40 seconds in the middle. It's time to take a breather. I can't keep this up. This is my dream job and I have a lot of fun doing it. I know I'm incredibly lucky, but a dream job is still a job and it's a job that keeps getting bigger and more complicated. And I am so tired. There's nothing in my life right now except work. I did get close to burning out, but fortunately I always knew when to step back from the brink. And it's not like I can drop the quality back down. That's not how YouTube works these days. Over the last year or so, I have talked to some folks who are more successful than me, who were in this position a few years back. And it's clear that I now have two possible choices. I could keep making bigger and better things, keep climbing the ladder, build a business, hire full-time employees, and end up as a manager. And that would be great for someone who isn't me, but I know I'm bad at that, and I'd hate every second of it. Hearing this, it made me reflect on like how much over the last year or two I've become a manager of people. I never liked the idea of having people working under me or being someone's boss or something. And while yes, the sort of structure that I have in regards to my content is very, very relaxed in that there's no real deadlines. People do as much or as little as they want or what have you. Everyone's fairly casual with things for the most part. It isn't like I have like 17 people in a room over there working nine to fives every day on YouTube videos. But at the same time, I do have people working for me, helping me out with stuff. Hearing this, it maybe reflects, I took the path that Tom Scott didn't want to take. I saw how competitive YouTube is and I realized that to be competitive, I needed to do far more than I was physically able to do myself. And so I just hired a lot more people. And eventually you reach the point where you realize that if you want to keep increasing the quality of what you do, as well as the quantity really, but both, you have to start hiring more people. Two people working together can potentially make something of a higher quality than one person working by themselves. It really depends on the project. On YouTube though, the degree to which you can scale with more people can often depend on the type of content that you produce. Commentary content, as I'm making right now, is one of the most scalable. Because ultimately, what is important here is what I'm saying, my voice, my opinions, my, my viewpoint of the things of particular interest to me. It doesn't really matter who edits that. The people I hire to edit it do a good job. But at the end of the day, the overwhelming vast majority of people who have any editing expertise could do it to that same quality, right? But you have other projects that are more like high quality animations or, or passion projects or oh you have people like Tom Scott who physically go to a place and read into a camera some script or what have you there's only so much of that you can do you can't outsource being Tom Scott in a field he has to physically go there he could not be producing one of those every single day and the people who don't accept the limitations of particular types of content and still try to outsource it usually end up doing things that are fairly unethical so for example well, we did just recently have the H Bomber guy video talking about all the people plagiarizing other people's YouTube videos and essays and, and whatnot in order to make as many video essays as possible as fast as possible. I stumbled across another example of this. This dude, Jack Saint, released a video. It was actually titled something different from this. It was actually titled before, we need to talk about YouTube plagiarism again. Him changing the title makes it seem like this isn't, a, isn't connected, but it is. And he, he talks about a guy called Moon who I've mentioned before on stream in saying that I think his content's pretty garbage. But apparently he is one of these channels that hires script writers, editors, hires people to do every part of the video except him reading the script, basically. And as a part of that process, a lot of these people he hires will just find a random video essay on, on YouTube, copy paste it and change a few words and then give it to Moon. What I'm saying is competing on YouTube these days 
as one individual doing everything eth ethically with effort is very hard, almost impossible. It feels like everyone with any level of success now is hiring a bunch of people and or trying to cut as many corners as possible to produce as much as possible. And it sucks. And I can totally understand Tom Scott looking at all this and going, yeah, fuck this. Fuck it. I'm out. And like, I'm not sure how much of him leaving is him perceiving things in the same way that I do, but it wouldn't surprise me if he saw things, if he saw things in this way to some degree. With that being said, in regards to my own, my own way of running my YouTube channel and stuff, I realize like a lot of the people that I have helping me right now is just because of shorts. I think everyone, to some degree, hates shorts, even those who succeed with shorts. They just feel so cheap and disposable and throwaway, and you feel like you have to do them, but you, it's hard to see the like how valuable they really are. My shorts are fire though? No, my underlying content is fire. The shorts themselves very rarely enhance things or make them better. Or at the very least, to what extent they do, it's because it might be like older content where I was less good at like emoting my voice in saying something. So like, I'm not saying my shorts are bad. I just mean that if I didn't have to do shorts or didn't feel obligated to do shorts, I would have a lot fewer people doing stuff for me. Like my process for getting people for shorts is here's an episode of Rambles, make a short. If it's good, I'll add you to the Discord and you just pick an episode of Rambles and make whatever shorts you want out of it and just move on to the next one. I probably got like a dozen people in there just themselves doing this, like with very lim limited direction from me. I'll look at my own ramble shorts every once in a while and watch them. And if there's an issue, I will reach out to the person and be like, hey, you're cutting a bit too fast or hey, the subtitles aren't synced correctly or something like that. Like I realize that a lot of what I do is managing shorts and I don't even really like shorts all that much, you know? Shorts are just a different way to distribute your content in an easier to access way, a win-win for everyone. To the degree that shorts detract from my normal content, that certainly isn't a win. As in like, that I have to dedicate time to shorts in any capacity rather than to things that I can be more proud of and that are more substantive. If I truly hated shorts in their entirety, I wouldn't do them regardless. But the current level that I'm at now and the things that I feel I need to do to compete, a lot of it I don't like is what I'm trying to say. I feel like with my goal of being a successful YouTuber, you know, it's required me to take on burdens or to, to do things that maybe a few years ago, I'd be like, I'm not gonna do that shit ever, man. Come on, come on. But I just like being a successful YouTuber so much and I like my content so much. I like what I produce. I'm very proud of what I produce. And what gives me more freedom to create more stuff is, is stuff that I support, you know? One thing I will say about my shorts though, is in some rare occasions, the shorts are presented and because they need to be limited to one minute, they do miss some context, which could cause people to misconstrue what I've said. As a person who likes writing 14 page essays to be as explanatory as possible, to have as many people as possible understand me, the short format of shorts increases the likelihood of miscommunication and that I do not like. But this has not happened with such a great frequency that it has, you know, caused me enough, uh, enough discomfort to stop doing shorts entirely. As with everything in life, there are positives and, and negatives, upsides and downsides. And with shorts, it's just hard to assess how much upside there is and how much downside there is and da da da. Like I'm sure some people looking at Tom Scott are like, uh, Tom Scott are like, dude, YouTube is so fucking easy, man. What are you talking about, man? It's easy mode. Why would you need to retire? Why would you ever need to uh, feel burnt out? Trust me, it's, it's more complicated than it looks. As they say though, it, it often depends on what type of YouTube you are and what you're trying to do. And I'll readily admit, YouTubers who aren't live streamers don't have the same problems or concerns or, or what have you as, as I do, right? People have different formats, different types of content they make, different types of burdens. But as I just say, as I keep repeating, it is more complicated than it looks to succeed on this platform. And it gets more competitive every day. I wish Tom Scott well, one of my favorite creators of all time, person I highly respect. I wish him the best. Stop! Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.